Okay, let's start on a new chapter. Five tissue organizations, so tissues. Okay, definition, a uh, series of, uh, of uh, cells uh, that work together to, to, to a particular role in a particular order. Components, cells, and stuff between the cells, matrix. Um, and see, we're gonna be classifying a lot of different tissues and we'll see that uh, when we would classify connective tissue, for example, it's a type of matrix that it has. Um, and some things have uh, lots of cells in very little matrix, like epithelial cells. Some, uh, some tissues have uh, relatively few cells and lots of matrix, like connective tissue. Okay. Really, there are only four basic types of tissues right there. Epithelial tissues, connective tissue, nervous tissue, muscle tissue. And we're gonna, uh, um, when epithelial uh, uh, tissues usually line body cavities and the outside of the body, nervous tissue sends messages, coordinates things. Muscle contracts and uh, generates uh, force. And connective tissue does lots of different stuff. It's the most variable type of tissue or connective tissue. Some are storage, some are transport, uh, some are structural. Okay. And it's different types. Uh, when we look at different types of epithelial, different types of connective, different types of muscle, there's only one type of nervous. Lots of different types of cells, but one type of nervous tissue. And it all comes from embryonic tissue. The three primary germ layers, which I'm gonna show you in the next slide, becomes what's called mesenchyme and mucus. And all the tissues in the body really start off as this, uh, this um, uh, uh, tissue called mesenchyme. And uh, really umbilical, umbilical cords are like mesenchyme. Okay. I don't know why they, labels didn't come in here, but these are the three primary germ layers. In late next semester, we talk about gastrulization, where you start off with two layers of cells, what's called a premium streak, and then uh, cells start to move into uh, space between these two cells. So it's from the top move into the space between the two, and they become the middle layer. So you end up with three germ layers. Um, the blue on the outside is ectoderm, and it leads uh, mostly to skin and nervous system. The yellow on the inside is called endoderm, and it leads to the whole GI tract and uh, uh, accessory glands. And the red stuff in the middle is mesoderm, and leads to everything between those, all the muscles and bones and, and uh, connective uh, tissue and everything is all um, Mesenchyme. Okay. I mean, mesoderm. So let's look at epithelial first. All right. Layer or layers of cell with a basement membrane. So a layer of cells, and this basement membrane is used to compose of what are called peptoglycans, uh, no, and, uh, glycoproteins, the type of glycoproteins. Um, in a basic in a basement membrane, we're so going to see that epithelial have an apical surface that lines some body cavity or the outside, and a basal surface that lines the blood side. Okay, how do you classify these epithelial tissues? One, the number of layers of cells that he had. Remember, if you have if you have one layer of cells, that's called a simple epithelial. If you have more than one layer of cells, that's called stratified. So two or more is stratified. Uh, so they uh, simple or stratified. And the shape of cells. Flat cells are called squamous. Square cells are called cuboidal. Rectangular cells are called columnar. Right? So the simple uh, epithelia stratified epithelia and then there are epithelia that have squamous cells, 
epithelia you have cuboidal, epithelia you have columna, and it's all the big combinations of those, of, of those styles. There's a couple of odd ones that don't really fit in uh, like that. One's called pseudostratified. It's called pseudostratified because it's, it's simple, but in a microscope, it looks stratified. Now, in a simple epithelium, all the cells hit the basement membrane. Stratified, only one layer hits the basement membrane. All the other cells are not hitting the basement membrane. Pseudostratified, they all hit the basement membrane. But uh, the different shapes, and it's hard to see that they do that under a microscope, so it looks like they're stratified, but it's actually simple. So it's called pseudostratified. And you'll see where these are located. Um, as a matter of fact, that's one of the things we're going to do is you're going to need to know the names of these tissues. In an example of where you might find it, in pseudostratified, you're going to find in the in lining your, your lung passageways. Transitional is odd in that if it's relaxed, it's stratified. If it's stretched, it's simple. And really, there's only a, a a couple places in the body where you find transitional, that's lining the urinary bladder. An empty bladder uh, has a, a stratified uh, epithelium. A full bladder, it's simple. And that's also true for ureters, the, uh, the tubes that bring urine from the kidneys to the bladder, they have transitional. So there's the three types of uh, 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 Shapes, squamous, as I mentioned, cuboidal columnar, and the functions. What do epithelial cells do for you? Protection, one thing, right? Um, from abrasion and infection, uh, and dehydration, uh, absorption and secretion, uh, bringing things in across the, uh, the, uh, um, epithelial lining from the lumen, from the, from the body cavity, into the blood, or secretion going the other direction, from the blood into the space. And then sensation. And this is, uh, we have uh, um, the, these, so, so the epithelia are innervated, they don't have nerves in themselves, but they're innervated, and you can feel things. Think of this if you look at skin, you can feel all kinds of of pressure and heat and cold and pain and everything through epithelial tissues. All right. They have receptors in them. Okay. So there is an epithelial um, uh, uh, tissue. So as I said, it has, these would be like simple columnar. And so you have an apical surface that lines the space. So it's lining some kind of space. And then you have a lateral surface, the side of the cell, and you have a basal surface that's uh, facing the basement membrane and uh, cancer tissues underneath and the blood side. And the blood is going to be down below the basal surface. So you have epithelium, basement membrane, and below that you can have some cancer tissue. Okay. So here's a, uh, a uh, this is, uh, Mislabeled. This up here is not a stratified epithelium. It's a simple epithelium. Uh, it's a, a, a simple squamous epithelium. This is a stratified epithelium, a stratified squamous. See how many uh, layers there are. And it's, uh, it's called stratified squamous, but it really is, um, they really are cuboidal down here, but they, the top parts are, are uh, squamous. So there's a squamous cell, a uh, cuboidal cell and a columnar cell. All right. So I, I just realized this was a mistake here. That, don't look don't confused. This, this should be say simple up here. Okay. So, as I said, you need to know the names of these um, dependent epithelia and where you might find them. So simple squamous, lining of blood vessels, lining of alveoli in your lungs, the serous membranes of body cavities that line all of your body cavities. Those are simple squamous epithelia. Um, and they're serous membranes. 
which means they secrete a watery fluid that allows organs to move in those body cavities without, without adhering to each other. Allows rapid diffusion and secretion in many cases. In the alveoli, allowing the uh, absorption of, uh, of oxygen and the secretion of uh, CO, CO2. And also lining blood vessels, allowing oxygen to leave blood vessels, CO2 uh, uh, go into cells and carbon dioxide to leave cells and go into uh, the blood. So for Pibordo, a single layer of square-shaped cells, you're gonna find those in kidney tubules, um, some exocrine glands, and actually in some endocrine glands also, you see those in, uh, a good example of those are in thyroid gland, uh, simple cuboidal. And they are absorption and secretion also. So columnar, best example is lining of the small intestine, the lining of the uterus, fallopian tubes or uterine tubes, uh, allows absorption and secretion in there, there as well. Um, and also movement of mucus. Okay, there's oftentimes uh, these uh, unicellular glands called uh, mucus glands, and they are in um, long with the simple columnar cells. So they're stratified, as I, as I mentioned before, lining of bronchi uh, bronchii, part of the male urethra, you see those stratified, secretion and propulsion of mucus. We'll talk about that when we get to the lungs, about how this mucus is moved along by cilia, the pseudostratified is usually uh, silly as well. A stratified squamous keratinized. Now, so there's two types of stratified squamous, keratinized and non-keratinized. Now, your skin is stratified squamous keratinized. And keratin is this really um, uh, strong protein that is very hydrophobic. It's, um, and it really protects you from dehydration. And actually the skin, the cells on the very outside of the skin are squamous and they're really just bags of keratin. And they're not alive anymore. Uh, they started off alive at the base of the skin and as they move and get pushed away by mitosis and basal layers, they get farther and farther away from uh, the blood and far away from oxygen and, and nutrients, and they eventually die. As they die, they pretty much stop everything except making character. And so on the outside, it's really, uh, it's really just dead bags of character. Uh, protection from dehydration. And that's one of the big things, problems in people who have third degree burns that destroys their skin, because uh, then they, they're very susceptible to dehydration. And also pathogenic organisms. One, this is the skin is an immune organ. It's the first line of defense against infection. And uh, keratin, like I said, is really tough protein and prevents bacteria and viruses from getting in. So I've had scream is non-keratinized. Openings into your body are usually trifled scream is non-keratinized. That is lining your mouth. Tongue, esophagus, anal canal, and vagina are all uh, stratified squamous non keratinized Resists abrasion and also protect them from, from infection, but not nearly as good as keratinized. Stratified cuboidal. You find these in sweat glands, you find them in ovaries and testes. And so they are responsible for secretion of, of, of sweat, uh, ovarian hormones, and uh, sperm, actually. As I mentioned, transitional urinary bladder allows stretching. Uh, stratified with empty bladder, uh, simple um, uh, for a full bladder. Now, there's one we, li we left out, and that is stratified columna. Extremely rare. I think it may be another part of the male urethra, I think. But it's so rare, we're not even going to bother talking about stratified uh, columna. Okay, glands. 
cells or organs. So sometimes glands can be a single cell, like mucus glands, or they can be uh, small organs that secrete something you somewhere else in the body or actually excrete it. So mucus screening cells, you know, say, and they uh, exist in mucus membranes, like uh, all of the uh, uh, linings of your uh, opening to, to, to your body, aligned by, by uh, mucus membranes, and they secrete mucus, like the pseudostratified um, cilia epithelia in the line of your bronchi, bronchioles. That's also a mucus membrane. It has uh, these what are called goblet cells that make mucus. Then um, multicellular glands fall into two categories, endocrine glands and exocrine glands. Endocrine glands we're going to skip over. They are ductless glands, and they secrete hormones. And uh, we're going to have a whole chapter. In fact, the next chapter I think we cover is going to be the endocrine system. So it's a big chapter, and we're going to have a whole chapter on that. Here we're going to talk uh, about the exocrine glands. These glands have ducts, and there's different types of secretions. A serous secretion is a watery fluid. Mucus is mucus. Mixed glands secrete both, a watery fluid with mucus in it, like salivary glands. Your saliva is watery, but it's also got mucus in it. And then cytogenic glands. Um, that um, that uh, secrete cells, and these are your gonads. Right? Now, um, so, so in a sense, they secrete sperm and oocytes. Wage is secreting American, African, and whole brain. And they're right there. Let me show you where they are. So, oh, by the way, in the book here, we have a bunch of pictures of these um, of these epithelia. Well, that's not going to be on the lecture exam. I'm not going to ask you uh, how you um, um, how you uh, how how these things look. That's going to be a lab thing. We have to know what they look like in lab, but not in lecture. Or American, African, and Holocron. That's right there on page 163. American glands. Secrete solutions by exocytosis and it's to secrete um, things into a duct like sweat glands and tear glands. Apocrine, the apical, apical portion of the uh, of the cell breaks off and then, and then the cell repairs itself. And that uh, includes mammalian glands and the serumineous ser glands in your ear canal. And then holocrine glands, the entire cell breaks off, uh, co comes off from the, from the uh, epithelium in there, and it breaks up and forms a secretion. And that's the basis glands, the oil glands in your skin. Okay, so here's um, oh, connective tissue. So now I'm going to connective tissue. Start off with a common origin, the mesenchyme. Common. Oh, and the rest of this, this part on glands, I'm not going to go into all these ways of classifying multicellular glands like compound tubular, simple cold tubular, compound multiple acid. You know, don't worry about that. We're not, we aren't going there. We're not going to go into glands um, that much. On top of A6164, Methods of exocrine gland secretion, barocrine, apocrine, and holocrine. That's good for now. Okay, connective tissue. Cells in a supportive matrix. Connective tissue is different in epithelial in a sense, not only functions and everything else, but uh, the fact that epithelial cells have lots of cells, very little matrix. Um, connective tissue uh, often has fewer cells and lots of it, matrix. Okay, so you have three types, cancer tissue proper, supported connective tissue, fluid connective tissue. 
And really, these are defined by a type of matrix they have. Do you have a fiber? Do you have a, like a gelatinous matrix? Do you have a fibrous matrix? Do you have a liquid matrix? Do you have a semi-solid matrix? Or do you have a solid matrix? Connective tissue proper, loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue. Fewer fibers, more ground substance. So areola, adipose, and reticular are called loose connective tissue. Dense connective tissue, more fibers, less ground substance. So the ground substance is this uh, glycoproteins, again, that exist between the cells. And, um, and these, uh, this dense connective tissue really is fibers, has a really a lot of uh, fibers, collagen fibers. Uh, long protein uh, that gives really like tensile strength and elasticity to things. Supporting connective tissue, cartilage and bone. Cartilage has a semi-solid matrix and it's three types of cartilage, hyaline, fiber cartilage, and elastic. And bone is a solid matrix and we have compact and splendid bone. And then fluid connective tissue is blood and lymph fluid connective tissues. Okay, so, so as I mentioned, connective tissue is the most variable type of connective tissue uh, that, that um, has more different kinds of uh, cells, more different kinds of matrices, and more different kinds of functions than, than any other uh, type of tissue. So like I said, Cells and matrix, few, usually few cells, lots of matrix. Cells, adipocytes, fat cells, mast cells. Those are cells that cause inflammation in your blood. Fibroblasts, these are uh, um, uh, cells that will become um, fibrous connective tissue. Whenever you see blasts at the end of, um, of something, that means an immature cell that hasn't grown up yet and could, could, could become a mature cell. A mature cell would be called a fibroblast, uh, a fibrocyte. So site, C-Y-T-E at the end of a cell means that's a mature cell. So you can also have um, a osteoblast. That's an immature bone cell. And then it, it uh, lays down solid matrix and becomes an osteocyte. Uh, white blood cells. They're considered to be connective tissue cells, even though they're, uh, and they're for, for protection, right? So they are immune cells, but they're still connective tissue cells, right? So this ground substance is, uh, as I mentioned, it's made up of these glycoproteins. And the glycoprotein is a protein that has sugar, sugars attached to it. Uh, they're sometimes called proteoglycan, or glycosaminoglycan, depending upon how much protein is in them, this is how much sugar. And then the fibers that are going to be in the ground substance, there's really three types. Collagen, which is really gives tensile strength. Uh, elastic, which gives elasticity, obviously. And reticular forms of a scaffolding to put other cells on. It gives shape the organs is a reticular um, fibers. So functions, we got support, we got protection, we got movement, we got storage, we got heat, we got transport. They're all functions of connective tissue. Right? So first look at fibers, loose, uh, areola or reticular. Areola has a gelatinous matrix, and it is lining uh, underneath uh, part of your, uh, underneath the stratified squamous epithelium of your skin is a layer of areola connective tissue over your whole body, and it's gelatinous. And one thing is, it actually helps protect you against bacterial infection, because if, the, if a bacterium does get through the stratified squamous epithelium, it often gets stuck in this gelatinous stuff in areola connective tissue. Reticular, loose fibers, it, as I mentioned, it makes up, it's a lot of collagen fibers and elastic fibers that make up 
the shape of organs. A dense a fiber can show is either dense regular or dense irregular. Dense regular has lots and lots of collagen fibers and they're all going in the same direction, same orientation. So this is like tendons that attach muscles to bone. It gives real tensile strength in one direction um, versus dense or regular tissue, which has collagen fibers going all different directions. So it gives tensile strength, but in every direction, not as much as dense regular would but some, and, and underneath the areola throughout the entire body uh, um, is a, a layer of, of uh, dense irregular connective tissue. Also, all cartilage is lined by a, a dense irregular tissue, um, called the perichondrium, and all bone is, lay, is on the surface of bone is a, a, a dense irregular connective tissue called the periosteum. Adipose, adipose tissue, fat storage. Now this is a little unusual from the, from I said before, usually there's not that many cells, lots of, um, uh, lots of matrix, but in, in adipose it's mostly cells with just a little bit of ground substance. There's a small amount of matrix between them. And they have two types of fat, two types of adipose tissue, white fat and brown fat. White fat is fat storage. Brown fat is heat production. And it was thought that uh, one time that only infants had brown fat. And now they realize that people have brown fat also. And if you fire it up on a really cold day, um, you burn um, ATP just to make um, heat and not do any work. So that's heat production. Uh, cartilage, um, uh, tissue proper, and it's semi-solid, rub, uh, flexible, rubbery matrix. Uh, the, the, the undeveloped cells are called chondroblasts, mature cells are chondrocytes, and they lacunae, so little spaces within uh, the uh, head of tissue. It's mostly support. And we have three types, hyaline, which is trachea, is, is hyaline cartilage. Elastic cartilage, your ears are elastic cartilage. Uh, I think hyaline cartilage is your nose, outside of your nose too. And fibril cartilage is intervertebral disc. The disc between the vertebrae and your vertebral column is fibril cartilage. Bone, bone is mostly support, right? Um, and gives, uh, uh, and allows uh, uh, muscles to move different body parts uh, with bone. The solid matrix, the immature cells are osteoblasts, the mature cells are osteocytes, and they're in lacunae also. Um, compact bone, outside of most bones have these haversion systems with lamellae. They have these, a uh, central canal with these, with these layers of bone with lacunae and osteocytes in, in, in between them. Spongy bone is in the head of long bones, the middle layer of flat bones in the skull, and they have these trabeculae. It's like, a, a, like cables of bone going throughout in space within the, uh, between those cables. And in the ends of long bones, in, in, in that space is red bone marrow, which is where bone cells, where blood cells are made. Speaking about blood, transport and immune function, right? That's what blood does. The liquid matrix, cells are red and white. Red blood cells really aren't cells, but they're called cells and white blood cells. And then cell fragments called platelets responsible for clotting. And of course, lymph, it's just filtered blood from capillaries. Uh, and it is just the same as blood plasma, except there's no cells and uh, virtually no proteins either. Nerve tissue, functional cells called neurons. Well, um, 
the, the way you think about the function of nerve cells is conduction of information, right? Um, those are called neurons. There are also supportive cells called glial cells or neuroglial cells, and they don't conduct, they assist um, the neurons in, in various ways, which we'll talk about when we get to, we're gonna have a whole chapter on nerve tissue. And we'll talk about the roles of these glial cells and how, and how neurons work. And nerve cells always have the same parts, uh, dendrites that receive information, a soma that integrates information, an axon that sends information, an axon terminal that gives information to another cell. Muscle. Movement, heat production. Two types, skeletal muscle attached to bone and is voluntary and striated. Cardiac comprises the heart, also striated but involuntary. And then smooth vis or visceral muscle comprises the walls of all the other hollow organs and is, and is not striated, it's the term smooth, and is also involuntary. And we're going to have, again, a whole chapter on muscle, uh, which is going to be mostly skeletal muscle, a little bit on smooth, tiny bit on uh, cardiac, because next semester, we'll have a whole chapter on the heart. Intracellular junctions. Hold cells together in tissue and sometimes allows communication between cells. Three times. Desmosomes, structural integrity like spot wells that hold cells together so that they move, they don't get uh, taken apart. Tight junctions between, prevent leaks between cells. So membranes that allow uh, absorption and secretion, you don't want that stuff to be leaking between cells. You want it to go through cells, like infusion or exocytosis or whatever. And then gap junctions are electrical connections between cells that allow uh, electrical information to travel directly from one cell to the next cell. And that's the best place to find that is in the heart. And they're also, uh, and sometimes in the brain as well, central nervous system, because they're also called electrical synapses. Membranes, cutaneous and serous. Cutaneous is the skin, the external uh, uh, membrane. Serous membrane, remember, internal lines by the cavities. It has an endothelium uh, and a uh, mesothelium. The endothelium um, lines the, the uh, for example, the lining of uh, all blood vessels that have a serous membrane lining them all by the cavities. And uh, remember, with a body cavity, you always have a, a serous membrane that lines the organs in the body cavity called the, called the visceral visual peritoneum or visual uh, pericardium, whatever. And then the parietal lines the actual body cavity. That's the parietal pericardium, parietal peritoneum. And then mucous membranes. Lines, passages that open to the exterior. Structure that could be simple or stratified, usually with unicellular mucous glands, has a lamina appropriate just underneath the epithelium where the areolar connective tissue is located. Then you have a late muscularis mucosa, a thin layer of smooth muscle underneath that. And I'll show you a, 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 a figure of a mucous membrane. And then synovial uh, membranes are really unusual in the sense that they don't have an epithelium. All of the membranes have an epithelium. Synovial lines, joint cavities, it's only connective tissue. And there is a, uh, uh, a mucous membrane. Here's the epithelium right here. There's the basement membrane. This is called the, uh, the uh, 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 submucosa here. Here's the, what's called the muscularis, which is uh, uh, usually two layers of muscle. This one has three, so it's probably, it's probably stomach. And, um, and here's a serous membrane on the very outside here. Okay, tissue growth, hypertrophy and hyperplasia. 
Hypertrophy is the tissue get growing larger and larger. A hyperplasia is getting more and more cells. Uh, so when you uh, actually go to the uh, gym and you pump up in a gym, you're really not doing uh, hyperplasia, you're doing hy hy hypertrophy. You're making larger cells. Different tissues have different reg regenerative capabilities. If you lose parts of your liver, you can regenerate. You lose parts of your heart, lose parts of your brain, it will regenerate that. Um, you can lose smooth muscle and regenerate smooth muscle, but not cardiac muscle or skeletal muscle. A neoplasia, abnormal growth of non-functional tissue, a tumor uh, is, is uh, some part of an organ, uh, the cells go through uncontrolled mitosis, that's cancer, and that's a tumor. And the differentiation changes in tissue. This is really a unusual change. Change of an embryo tissue into adult that happens in everybody, right? The mesenchyme becomes connective tissue. Metaplasia is change of adult tissue. It really only happens, I think, in one place, and that's the vagina. In, 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 in a very young um, girl, the vagina is lined by a cuboid or uh, After uh, near puberty or after puberty, it's lined by a a stratified screen is non keratinized epithelium. That's called metaplasia. Okay, stem cells, embryonic and adult. Embryonic stem cells are what's called total potent. They can become anything. Right? Adult stem cells can just become one type of cell. Like the cells in bone marrow, red bone marrow, are uh, called pluripotent. They can become any 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 uh, a blood cell, red, white, or these megacaria that make platelets. Um, so that's uh, so that's the levels of plasticity. Embryonic stem cells, like when you're eight cell uh, morula, they're called totopotent. They don't have any genes turned off. They can become anything. Um, pluripotent. Can uh, can be can become um, uh, many different things. Also, along with multipotent, unipotent is one uh, one thing it be, it, can, it can become. Like a like a fibroblast can only become a fibrocyte. An osteoblast can only become an osteocyte. Uh, tissue regeneration, fibrosis, replacement of functional tissue with non-functional scar or fibrous tissue. So when you have a heart attack, heart out, heart muscle dies. It's not replaced by muscle, it's replaced by fibers, connective tissue, and that doesn't conjoin. So it's a weakened area in the heart. The tissue shrinkage and death, atrophy is shrinkage from disuse. You don't use your muscles, they will atrophy. Necrosis is death due to trauma, toxins, infections, or being green. Uh, infarction is death through lack of blood, like a myocardial infarction is a lack of blood. Apoptosis is programmed cell death, internal suicide program that cells have. And sometimes this is good, sometimes not so good, but cells can commit suicide. They're infected by a virus, they'll let the uh, immune system know that they're infected and please come by and kill them. And a lot of embryonic development is actually cells killing themselves um, to set up organs and different structures. Okay, I went through that pretty fast, but I wanted to get this to in one, in one uh, video program. So that's gonna be two or three uh, tissues. And so we're all done. And so hopefully we'll stop this now. And, uh, and go on to the uh, next chapter.